what Pentecostals do not understand, what laying on of hands really means. This is part 15 of the False Signs and Wonders series. We've been working through the series on false signs and wonders. False signs and wonders are a feature of the end time Great Tribulation. Now, we're not quite in that time yet because we're in the apostasy right now. But signs and wonders are already starting to increase now. And we see that in the charismatic and the Pentecostal churches. Signs and wonders were limited to the apostolic age to validate the apostles and the apostolic church who God used to write the New Testament. Signs and wonders are also symbols of spiritual truth, which points to the gospel. Signs and wonders today are in the Pentecostal and charismatic movement. It defines who they are. They also have a false gospel, false prophecy, and they use this baptism in the spirit, which they don't understand. They believe it's a second filling, which is not, it symbolizes salvation. And they say you have to be baptized in the spirit, and then you can do signs and wonders, which are about the flesh, not the spirit. And these laying on of hands, they believe still result in miracles today. Please consider subscribing to this channel. There's a little red button in the bottom right hand corner. Let's move on with this study. Okay, so this Pentecostal laying of hands, this is what it means to them. It's a supernatural effect of laying on hands. There, it can bring supernatural healing. And of course, we know the body heals itself to a large degree. But things that are not healable by the body or the natural processes that God's designed, they believe they can transcend and have supernatural healing. Also slain in the spirit, they fall backwards, they lay their hands on, they fall backwards, and they can receive the baptism in the spirit by people laying hands on them, speaking in tongues, prophecies, word of knowledge, etc. So this <clears throat> laying on of hands is actually a tool that they use to support false signs and wonders. Now this laying on of hands is actually not limited to Pentecostals and Charismatics. It's actually bled over into various evangelical and independent churches. Baptists use it, Roman Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, Mormons, etc. Now it can be used in a symbolic way for ordination, baptism, confirmation, healings, but, but it's, it, when it goes into false signs and wonders, it's not appropriate. And again, the Pentecostals, they believe it's a supernatural event instead of just a symbolic event. And again, it's a tool that they use. Okay, so it's important to understand, and we've looked at this before, and I'll tag this slide with, this, with the whole video we've done on this, but apostolic gifts ceased, ceased upon the writing of the New Testament. It was an apostolic gift in the first century. <clears throat> an apostle was a sent one who was a first-hand witness. They saw and heard Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 15. Signs and wonders validated that apostolic authority and the apostolic church. Signs and wonders were also symbols of the gospel, spiritual truth. Signs and wonders ceased after the word was completed by the apostles and the word of God now spread among the Gentiles in the world and then apostolic gifts ceased. So let's move on in the study and look at laying on of hands. So let's now turn to the Bible. Let's look at all the passages in the Bible about laying on of hands and see what the Bible teaches. And this slide is a summary. We're going to see that the laying of, on of hands, it's a symbol of the control of another's will. We see it used in the Bible when people were arrested, like Jesus, they laid their hands on him when they arrested him. Sending out ministers to ordain them, if you will, from ministry, laying the hands is a symbol about that. And then the other one is signs and wonders. And that's what we see the Pentecostals have hijacked that. And indeed, we see in the Bible, the hands, the laying of hands brought baptism in the spirit, which we know is salvation and sanctification. It brought healings, it brought raising of the dead. And all that was apostolic gifts in the first century. And they all have symbolic meaning. So we're going to go through these passages and we're going to understand exactly the symbolic meaning of laying on of hands. Okay, so let's first look at the hand. The hand. In the Bible, sometimes we take for granted the words we read in the Bible. 
And we see that the hand in the Bible very often represents to be under the will or control of another person or nation. For example, Psalm 106, he gave them into the hand of the heathen. Their enemies also oppressed them. They were brought into subjection under their hand. This theme runs all through the Bible. Many, many, many occurrences that to be brought into the control of another person or nation is to be delivered into their hand. And that's what the, because the hand is the things that we control. We use our hands in a great amount to control, to do things. And that was the symbol of that used extensively in the Old Testament. Psalm 37, the wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him, but the Lord will not leave him in his hand. He, God will deliver us from the control of wickedness. And the biggest uh, hand we were taken from was the hand of Satan. In our salvation, we were taken out of his control and we are transferred into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the hand means to be taken under control. Okay, laying on the hands, here's an example. The arrest of Jesus Christ. They sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him. And again, it's the same phrase that's used in, in, in signs and wonders and things. No man laid hands on him because his hours was not yet come. And in other words, they didn't take control. They didn't arrest him yet. And then Matthew 26, we see, And Jesus said to him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on him and took him. This is the Garden of Gethsemane where they arrested him. They laid hands on Jesus. They took control. They took control of his will. Jesus allowed his will to be taken control of. It was all for the divine purpose of God. Luke 21, before all these things, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to synagogues and to prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my sake. That's talking about the great tribulation, but they take control. They lay hands on you. They persecute you. They bring you into synagogues and before kings and, and all type of ways that they try to take control. Acts 5, they lay their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. It's very clear in the Bible, laying on of the hands is to take control of somebody's will. Also, also, it has to do with the sending forth of ministers, which the laying on of hands to send forth ministers into the, into the world to go minister the gospel, it's a symbol, it's used symbolically of, of controlling their will. They're sending them, they're under the control of the, the person who's sending them out. Notice in Acts 6, this is the seven original deacons. Brethren, look, out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. The deacons were going to quote unquote serve tables. They were they were the the ministers that made everything stick together, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. The apostles laid their hands on these men that were honest and of good report to go do this service. They were going to do the will of the apostles because the apostles were in prayer and the word of God. Acts 13, the Holy Spirit said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and they sent them away. Again, it's symbolizing that the church is sending them. They're under the control and, uh, of and the will of God's apostles, and they were sent into the mission field. First Timothy 4, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given you by prophecy, by the laying on the hands of the presbytery or the elders. Again, Timothy was had hands laid on him to have a gift to go and serve the church. Okay, now we're going to turn and see where laying on of the hands, which is God's control of the will, it's used as a symbol of salvation, of a symbol of God's hand bringing salvation. We're going to see it in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the raising of the dead, and then other healings. So that's, let's turn to that right now. Okay, first, God's hand. He has control over our salvation. We don't choose him. He chooses us. We don't make a decision for Christ. It's the faith of Christ that's given to us by grace as a gift. Psalm 44, for they got not the land in possession by their own sword. This is talking about Israel. Neither did their own arm save them, which is, a, this is all symbolic of salvation. 
but thy right hand, God's right hand, and thine arm, and the light of thy countenance, because you had favor, grace unto them. It's God's hand that does the saving. It's his will. He has control over salvation. It's his decision. Psalm 138, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Your control, only God has the power or the control to save us. Psalm 18, thou hast given me the shield of thy salvation. Thy right hand has held me up. It's God's will that he makes us stand. He's the one that, that, that it causes salvation and makes us righteous. And thy gentleness has made me great. Psalm 118, the voice of rejoicing. Salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteousness. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. And in other words, it's all God's work. It's none of us. It's all of God. It's God's will, God's work, God's in control. God's will and salvation. Let's move to the New Testament. As many as received him, and that's a passive reception, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. God's hand. It's God's will in salvation. We weren't born of our own will. It's not our free will. It's not a flesh. It's not somebody baptizing us, not somebody putting us into a church. It's we were born again by only of God, of his will and salvation. 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy colon. God's done the work, not according to our works, but according to his purpose, his own purpose and grace. The faith we have is a gift of grace. It's by God's work, which, it, which was given us, given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit, which is the baptism of the Spirit, is spirit. Salvation is completely under God's hand and His will. We're going to look at a couple of passages in the book of Acts that show the laying of the hands resulting in salvation, baptism in the Spirit. And just as a review, and I'll tag this slide, we did a study on the baptism of the Holy Spirit that it's tied, it's salvation and it's sanctification. It's the Holy Spirit's work in saving us and cleansing us. Salvation and sanctification, it's a new spiritual birth, a new spirit, new creation, we're spiritually born again, and then God's Holy Spirit dwells in us and works with us, witnesses with our spirit, makes God's people holy. He's our guide, he's our comforter. So please look at that video if you can. It's important as background for the next two slides. Okay, so we look at now, there's two passages, and we've done videos on each of these passages, Acts 8 and Acts 19, that the laying of the hands brought salvation. And this is the, the Samaritans. We see Acts 8, Philip the Evangelist had been there in Samaria preaching, and then Peter and John, when they were come down, because they heard that, that they were listening, they were, he was making disciples, but they were not yet saved. Peter and John, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. And in other words, become saved. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were baptized in water. They believed and they were baptized, but they, they still did not have salvation. They were not indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And then we see in the next verse that Peter and John laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon, the sorcerer, saw that through the laying on the apostles' hands was given, he offered money, saying, give me this power too that whomsoever I lay hands on, he may receive the Holy Spirit. And as the passage goes on, Simon the sorcerer is an unsaved person, a symbol for somebody that's religious and in it for gain. But we see here the laying on the hands, and again, the laying on the hands, it, it's, it symbolizes the will of God in salvation. It's not that the laying of hands is magic in itself, but this was a sign and a wonder done by the apostles, but in the working of God, that these people were baptized in the Spirit, they received salvation and sanctification, and it's a sign and a wonder. It's not for today. It's completed. These are apostolic signs and wonders again, but it shows that the laying on the hands, again, the hands points to the will, God's will. The apostles are, are the, the sent ones from God. They lay hands on, and these people become saved. Similarly, we see the same thing happens with the Ephesians. This time it was Apollos planting the seeds, resulting in people believing,
but it wasn't saving faith. It wasn't, they were not yet baptized in the Spirit. So we see then Paul comes to Ephesus. He found certain disciples and said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And that belief is man's generated faith. They're interested. They're, they're listening. God is calling them. God, they're elect. They're being called, but they're not yet at the point of salvation. And they said unto him, well, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Spirit. And Paul asked, well, then what were you baptized? And he said, under John's baptism, which we know is, of course, in water. Then Paul said, well, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on Christ Jesus. And John's baptism of repentance in Acts 1.5 and many other places is compared to being baptized in the Holy Spirit. They needed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, which means they needed to be saved and sanctified. Up till then, it was a simple belief. Their own generated. They were interested. God was calling them because they were hearing the word of God, but they were not yet at the point of salvation. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Paul laid his hands upon them and the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. This is the point of salvation. And it's evidenced, evidenced by signs and wonders, by speaking in tongues and prophecy. But this passage is important to see that the laying on of hands again, it's symbolic. It's showing that God's will has to be done. Apollo's coming as an eloquent orator wasn't good enough to save them. It's only God's work that can save people. We see a beautiful picture of the laying on of hands, Jesus Christ raising the dead, a little girl. And again, the hand of God in salvation, the control of the will. The, these people were helpless to, to raise this little daughter. It's only the hand of God that can provide this salvation. And this is a real bona fide miracle that Jesus did, but it's also symbolic of the beautiful truth of raising people to salvation. We see in Mark 5, there came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus. He fell at Christ's feet. He fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death, I pray thee. Come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. The hands again, lay your hands, the will of God and salvation. And then there's intervening verses where the little girl actually died. The girl died because Jesus tarried and was doing another miracle. And we see later under that Mark 5, 41, he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumi, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto you, arise. She arose from the dead, a symbol of salvation that God's people raised, are raised from the dead by the laying on of the hands. We see a symbol raising the dead as a symbol of salvation. For example, Colossians chapter 2, we're, we're buried with him in baptism, and that's spirit baptism, where also we are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. We're spiritually dead before we're saved, and we need God to take control of our will, lay his hands, and raise us from the dead. We were dead in our sins, and the uncircumcision of our flesh, and he was quickened together with him, and we're forgiven all trespasses. The similar passage in Romans 6, we are buried with him in, by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by glory, the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. That's what the baptism of the Spirit is all about. Colossians 2 and Romans 6 points to the baptism of the Spirit. It's a beautiful thing. Not only did Jesus lay hands and raise the dead, he also healed by laying his hands on people. We see in Mark chapter 6, verse 5, when Jesus was in his own land, he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. The laying on in Christ's hands results in healing, and that's spiritual healing. Again, another symbol of salvation, which we're going to look at shortly. Luke 440, when the sun was setting, all they that had sick with various diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on everyone and healed them. The woman bowed over. He laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. The laying on the hands, it's the will of God. It's taking control of these other people's will that are unable. They're unable, but by God's will and God's grace, we see healing. And that's all pointing to spiritual healing. In addition, Christians, the, the, the apostles during the apostolic age, were able to lay their hands on people and heal people. We see in Mark 16, these signs shall follow them that believe. These are apostolic signs. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. And they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. 
All of these things are symbols with spiritual truth. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And that's the spiritually sick. Acts 28, it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux to whom Paul entered in and prayed. He laid his hands on him and healed him. It's an apostolic gift. It's not for today because those apostolic gifts have, have, he, have ceased. But these laying on of hands, it, it again points to the will of God in salvation of his people. And let's look at some verses about healing being a symbol for salvation. So here's some verses that are very important to keep in mind where healing is symbolized, is a symbol for salvation. Jeremiah 3, return ye backsliding children and I will heal your backslidings. And in other words, Israel, people that are, are out there living like the world, they're not saved. Backsliding to come back is to be saved. I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto them for thou art Lord our God. And God heals them from that rebellion. Isaiah 1, ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. They have forsaken the Lord. Why should you be stricken? Why should you be diseased anymore? The whole head is sick. You're sick in the head and the whole heart faint or weak. You have the, your head and your heart are ill. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness or wholeness or healing in it. But wounds and bruises and putrid sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. They're in need of healing. That's what it means to be unsaved, is to be in need of healing. All type of illness, sickness, uh, problems in the body. Jeremiah 17, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Illness in the body was symbols of being unsaved. And in the apostolic age, those healings were symbols of salvation. And finally, we see the healing of the brokenhearted. Those, are, those who have hearts that are broken. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble. That's salvation. It's to be born again spiritually. And to revive the heart of the contrite ones. There's something broken in the heart. I have seen his ways and I will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is afar off. And to him that is near, and I will heal him. Healing is a symbol of, of making those brokenhearted people come to know Christ and to save them. Psalm 147, the Lord do, does build up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcast. He heals the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. Symbols of salvation. Luke 4, 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. To preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. All these things are all symbolic of salvation. And we see laying on laying the hands on for healing is a symbol for God's will in that salvation. Just a quick summary of laying on of hands. Pentecostals use it as the tool, the tool where they say they can baptize people in the spirit. They can have people speak in tongues and do all type of miracles, etc. But it's false because the apostolic signs and wonders ceased when the Bible was completed. But what we see is that the laying on the hands has got symbolic meaning. The hands, it's a, it's a symbol for the control of another's will. It was used like when people were arrested to send out ministers. It's symbolic. But from a larger perspective... It's symbolic of salvation. And that's why Jesus and the apostolic church, they baptized in the spirit. There was raising of the dead. There were healings. All those things pointed to salvation because the hands, it's God's hand that's active. He has the control of our will. He alone is the, the author of salvation and sanctification. It's a beautiful picture of the laying of hands, but it's symbolic. The next video we're going to look at, we're going to go right into the symbolism of the healings in the Bible. It's a great study. Please consider subscribing to this channel, and thank you very much for watching this video.